Hey everybody, it's Zach. In my workshop tonight, we're gonna be dissecting the Nike Air Zoom Vapor Cage 4 Rafa Limited Edition Metallic Silvers. That is a mouthful. So on these tennis shoe dissections, if you're new to the channel, what we do is first we take the right shoe and we cut it in half. That acts as our kind of map key for the shoe. Second, we dissect out the left shoe layer by layer to find out where all the pieces of tech are. And when we dissect the shoe, it really can give us a comparison. How did this shoe play for me over the last two weeks versus what's under the hood of the shoe? And this should be able to give you a ton of insight as to how this shoe will play for you and how it will perform during your tennis matches. And remember, we'll also be doing the durability test on the upper as well as on the outsole and tread. And I'll take you back to the last two weeks where we put these things through the suicide test and the serve test, which I didn't put in the original uh, play test video, but are in this video tonight. So let's get straight to it. Let's dissect out the Vapor Cage 4s. Start with the heel counter, which was relatively soft for a tennis shoe, especially because I could get my knife through it relatively quick, as you can see me just coming straight through it, kind of cutting like butter. And typically you want your heel counter to actually be pretty stiff. That way you get a little more responsiveness going side to side. And that would account for this shoe's almost sluggish type feeling when moving from corner to corner. Here you see me coming through the upper, which was pretty easy. And here you see the air zoom units being exposed. Now, as you watch me pull my knife through, you'll notice a pop. That's the air zoom unit losing its air. That's pretty cool. Now, the insole of this shoe was very durable very thick and padded and I think that's what accounted for a lot of the comfort of the shoe it felt pretty good right out of the box. And before we can dissect the shoe we've got to get the laces out. Now this proved to be a challenge because the eyelets on the outside of the shoe were spaced pretty close apart and they were a little axial so I actually had to get my little screwdriver in there at some points to get them out. Now on the inside of the shoe you just had these little hoops that were holding the laces in and that's going to produce some uneven tension because when you tie the shoe the outside of the shoe is going to tie tighter than the inside because the outside of the shoe has a death grip on these laces whereas on the inside of the shoe it's basically just attached by these little hoops. See the removable insole of this shoe is very generously padded. You typically don't see that much padding on a removable insole. Here we are cutting through the upper of the shoe and the one thing I noticed about the upper as soon as I cut into it was how thick and padded it was. Now you are going to sacrifice some speed and some weight for that padding but geez what a comfortable padded upper this shoe has. Now here's a look right here at that elastic strap that holds the inside of the shoe to the tongue. Cutting that out. And there you see the two-piece tongue. Once again, that elastic strap just wasn't enough to produce even tension on the tongue. Starting to notice a pattern here. Look at all that padding in the heel. The shoe is all about padding. Looking at the outer and the upper of this shoe, you notice all these kind of rubber pieces on there. That gives the top of the shoe and the side a lot of durability. And when we do our Dremel test on it with our highest grit sandpaper for 10 seconds, you will notice that it barely made a dent in this material. So if you usually burn through hot spots in your shoe or you like to slide on a hard court, you are gonna find a real good friend in this shoe as it did not make hardly any impression on it. Now, the only bad thing is it is glued. There isn't much stitched material in the upper. And I like stitched uppers because it does give you a little bit more lateral stability. Here you see a nice little rubber piece in the heel, which also aids in breaking the shoe in a little quicker because it expands more. So now I'm dissecting out the removable insole. That's all the stitching that's in there. It's also glued to the midsole of the shoe. Now, as we expose the shoe by cutting in half, you'll notice coming through the midsole shank and the outsole that this shoe just has an unbelievably thick midsole made of Nike foam, which makes the shoe just so comfortable and gives it a nice bounce, as well as that pink shank that we just went through, which you can see with my knife there. That's made of polypropylene, a material that almost acts kind of like a diving board, which also gives you a nice spring in your step. Now, as you can see on the outside of that shoe, it looks like there's an air pocket there, but there really isn't. It's just one piece of plastic on the outside, and the rest is just all that midsole of Nike foam. 
Now what I was really interested in was that air zoom unit that I popped through in the beginning of the video. So I cut the front part of the shoe in half to reveal what the air zoom unit looks like. And here you can see on the profile of the shoe, it goes straight through the ball of the foot to give you some padding there. Now, as you can see, when I put my instrument in there, all that is is just some woven material, and that is basically just to define the space. There's compressed air, there's pumped air in there, typically when the shoe hasn't been punctured, and that area is inflated. And what that woven material does is just make sure that that space where the air goes into stays uniform in the shoe and gives uniform density and almost buoyancy to that part of the shoe. Here you can see our Dremel test, 10 seconds, no pressure, with the highest grit sandpaper on the Dremel. And this really only produced about a millimeter of damage. As you can see on the right though, I really cranked on the Dremel at one point to see how much damage I can produce. And even with all my force, I really only produced about three millimeters of damage. So that six month durability guarantee is no joke. This produced similar results to the Stycon, which also had a really nice durability profile. And this, of course, is compared to our control shoe, which produced about four millimeters of damage. So how does this dissection compare to how these shoes play on court? So over the last two weeks, I've been playing on them pretty regularly, and then I finished by playing with them on clay. Now, I did notice that this wide herringbone in the heel did leave me slipping a little bit if the clay was even a tad dry, and even on some uh, more hydrated parts of the courts, they did slide a little. The shoe was also very bulky, right? So when we dissected it, we saw that the midsole on them was really thick, and that really meant that the shoe did not have as much responsiveness as I would have liked from a tennis shoe. It just didn't get up and go as fast as a lot of others I saw. Another thing is, is when I sweat in the shoe, this outer of the shoe and the upper kind of held on to a lot of that heat and sweat, and so it kind of felt almost spongy in the shoe. It did, however, give me a pretty good bounce on my serve. I got 26.5 centimeters on the serve test, which really was surprising. And I think that was just from standing still on the shoe and then bouncing. I think the shank and the midsole does offer you quite a bit of pop off of your serve. I also noticed an initial spring in my step when doing the suicide test. However, after a little bit, the shoes did start to feel a little sluggish and heavy. And this res was reflected in the results as these shoes came in at 15.90 seconds as compared to my old New Balances at 16.02 and they were two months old. Some of the great parts of this shoe that I noticed from this dissection. Number one, if you're a teaching pro and you are on court all day, standing, feeding balls, uh, these are some of the best shoes I think you can buy. Just because of how padded this midsole is and the heel, and specifically the forefoot. I have not seen a tennis shoe with this much forefoot cushioning in a while, especially with their air zoom unit up here. So if you're constantly standing on court, not really moving a lot side to side, if you're at the hopper feeding balls, this is probably one of the better shoes you can buy. Number two, if you are just someone that wants comfort right out of the box, if you're just someone that really likes that soft, comfortable feel of a shoe, and there are a lot of players like that, this is definitely a good pickup. If you're looking for speed and cutting, this might not be the greatest shoe on planet Earth for you. However, if you do do a lot of sliding, these will prevent some of that wear in the upper of the shoe. As a reminder, we still have the teardown of the Asics Gel Resolution 8 coming up, as well as the play test and performance review of the Wilson Amplifield 2.0, their high top. So if you don't wanna miss those videos, click the subscribe button and notification bell. Well, I'm gonna go find out what kind of sorcery they put on these shoelaces. Otherwise, everybody have a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from. We'll see you next time.